Hey guys, it's Jason from Den and DJ. Today we released Engine Prime update version 1.2.1. This update brings a number of new features and improvements to Engine Prime desktop, the SE5000, and also the brand new SE5000M. Alongside of 1.2.1, we also released MCX8000 firmware version 2.0. These releases together give you the power of Engine Prime on the MCX8000 hardware. Let's take a look at the software and I'll show you some of the brand new features and also how to prepare your drive for the MCX8000. Uh, the first feature I want to show you is the ability to drag and drop a folder and all of its playlists um, right into your collection. So you can either right click and choose import as playlist or crate or you can do the drag and drop method. So I clicked it, I'm going to drag it and drop it right into my playlist window. And you can see here that you've got all of those uh, playlists that were also in the iTunes structure now in your uh, internal engine prime library playlist. And you can drag and drop those over to the crate area just the same. Um, and that feature is available for Tractor, um, Serato, and iTunes. Uh, the next feature I want to show you is the ability to freely arrange your playlists. So now you can drag and drop or click and drag and rearrange them in the order in which you see fit, which is great for moving things around, you know, depending on the um, gig or performance that you're doing. The next feature is the uh, support for the MCX8000. So if you open up your preferences and go to the library tab, there's a um, support option here, enable MCX8000 compatibility. Let's turn that on. And so when you turn that on, two things happen. You get this We've got this export to MCX option down at the bottom, and then there's an additional column here for MCX 8000 compatibility. Just make that bigger so you can see it. And if that's not there, you can just right click or double click on it, and you can move this column all the way back up to the top so you can see it. And what that column means is, or what it represents, is the actual whether or not this file will play on the MCX 8000 hardware. Uh, the MCX8000 only supports files that are 44.1, so anything that's greater than that, 48 kilohertz, for example, will not play and will also not have a dot in that, um, this column. So we can sort it and see all these tracks here, they will not be supported. Uh, but it looks like most of mine are. All right, so let's grab some music and get it ready for the MCX. So I'm going to grab this opener crate with some sub crates and just drag it over. Open up the job monitor, it's almost done, packing, cool. So that's all set, it looks like my tracks are there. I've got all my sub crates, perfect. And it looks like the majority of them are compatible, which is great. And now the last step is just click this export button. Uh, once we click this, it's just gonna take your library and make it um, compatible for the MCX so that all the, the navigation speeds that you're accustomed to with engine 1.5 are the same. Uh, and then we've got this quick pop-up at the end if you had tracks that were not compatible. And it's just letting you know, you know, these tracks are not compatible, so in case you're looking for them but you don't find them on the MCX, uh, these are the ones that won't be there. And if you need more information, you can go right to that web page noted there in the pop-up. So we're all set. We've got our tracks ready to go to the MCX. Let's eject the drive and take a look at MCX firmware 2.0. All right, so now I've prepared my USB stick in Engine Prime. Just gonna go ahead and put it into the MCX. All right, and you can see our prime drive is loaded. I'm gonna access my crates that I just pulled over from Engine Prime. And you can see I have the crates and all the child crates. I'm gonna go into this feature sole. And the first thing I wanna show you is the new option for BPM filtering. So you go to the BPM now, uh, and you can filter down and dial into a certain range of BPM but we added the ability to sort these now. So as the list is populated, you can see that all the tracks are now sorted by BPM. So I'm gonna load this track to deck two. And as soon as the track loads, you can see now that we have all of our beat grids. And we can jump through the track with the beat grid or the beat jump button. And it stays in perfect time. Now the beat grids look great on this track, but if they were off just a little bit, 
you can use the slide button and the platter to move the beat grid forward and back. And I'm going to put that right back on that first transient lined up. And so the beat grid looks great. Next I want to show you is the quantize feature so we can make sure that everything is locked tight to that grid. And right now it's currently off, but if you press the adjust button, we've got an eighth beat, a quarter beat, a half beat, and one beat. And then if you wanted to turn it off completely, just use the shift button and press the adjust. And from here, what I like about having the beat grids and using the beat jump controls is I can quickly go through the track and I can set all of my hot cues. So if I just do beat jump forward, I can jump into different parts of the track based on the loop size. All right, so let's start this track up. I'm gonna load a track onto deck one. So this track comes in at 108. We're at 110 on this deck. And the beat grid looks good. I'm gonna play it. It's off a little bit, but if we press sync, it pulls everything back together. Now we force it out. Press sync again. Pulls everything back in. All right, so those are the new features of the Beat Grid, the Quantize, uh, and the Engine Prime support. Uh, now we also added some additional features to the mixer. Let me just stop these and go into the utility menu. Just hold down the view button, get in there, we go up to the top. And the first setting that we added was the ability to change the USB output level. So right now it's set to zero, but you can increase that all the way up to 20 dB which is great for uh, recording your mixes on your computer. Uh, the next settings that we added were the microphone attenuation for one and two, and those can, can be controlled all the way to negative 20 dB uh, back to zero dB. Uh, talk over level also has uh, dB control, talk over resume between fast or normal, and that just um, is a setting for how quickly the music will resume once you finish speaking into the microphone. Uh, booth receive on or off. Uh, this is available on the control surface through the talk over button, but we also added it here in the utility menu. Uh, scrolling down a bit, some additional features are the sync mode. Uh, obviously, we only had the tempo syncing before, but now that we have the beat grid function, we have beat syncing, which is great. And then the additional control here for your beat grid quantized value. And again, uh, this is just an extra feature that you can uh, change the setting here, but it's available from the adjust button on the control surface. All right, guys, that wraps up this video on the Engine Prime 1.2.1 update and also the MCX 8000 version 2.0 update. Thank you so much for watching and be sure to check out the full release notes on the product pages for more detailed information. See you next time.